Welcome to Catch the Craze. We are the heart of the industry. I'm so crazy. You're so crazy. Crazy. Welcome to Cast the Craze Podcast Audio Mix. I am your host with the most, Sam the Crazy Man Vera, along with my co-hosts. Jonathan the Psycho Side Facts. Michelle St. Martin. There you go. And so, the topic of today, there are no guests on the show, is strictly commentary, just for you. What are we talking about today? All right. Uh, I guess I'll go on with that. Um... Topic is, is there an oncoming backlash to all the political correctness that's been going on? And that includes the comics industry, what's sacred, what isn't, and uh, let's see, is uh, in this case, is it a case of art imitating life right now? And uh, let's go. Okay, so let's uh, let's elaborate on that. Uh, let's, 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 let's dissect it step by step. Okay. So that first sentence. What about political correctness? Yeah. Well, I just found find everything's been whitewashed. Um, not even as of late. I guess within the past, I would say five to ten years within the industry, um, I think things have been coming kind of stagnant. You know, been becoming kind of stagnant lately um, in terms of subject subject matter. Uh, what's been breached? What isn't? There's everybody's been very formulaic. Every, it's just the stagnancy right. that um, I just feel has been, you know, being played. Right. And, uh, you know, is there something coming that's going to put the kibbutz in that? Right. And bring back the comics industry to what it once was, you know, or close to it. Right. I don't know if it can be, you know, ever be uh, right. replicated, but... I think... You know, we were talking about this off the air um, about when we interview guests, mm -hmm. we try to be friendly right? Um, on some occasions and not tell the truth um, mm -hmm. because we don't want to hurt this aspiring creator or aspiring publisher's chances of survival. Right. You know, um, but sometimes there are products that come across our table or we're solicited by independents that we feel need more work. Right. And rather than telling the truth, we still give them a voice. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be the case anymore for 2007. Okay. I think we need to be, all of us in the independent community, are that much more critical of each other um, just to save ourselves from the destruction within this community because there is, I said it before and I'll say it again, there is this stigma that as an independent, you're fly by night and you, know you won't have longevity. You, you really haven't done your research. You really haven't done anything. So, w I, you know, it's great that you have forums like Dime Store Productions and you have the Comic Book Artist Guild and you have, right. you know, digital webbing. But are we all being critical of each other and saying, well, you know what, this really isn't up to par. We want right. to create this nexus and this, 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 this collective and all help each other. But if we're not telling each other the truth and being mentors to one another and saying, dude, you know, your anatomy is completely off. Or, dude, you know, there really is no pacing to the story. You know, you know, dude, you know, you really need to work on your coloring. Um, and this is how, you know, or we just all embracing each other for the sake of creating a movement that's a, uh, in a position of the big two that we're being blinded by the fact that we might be hurting ourselves. Right. You know right. what I mean? You mm -hmm. know, so it's like, are we really being honest? You know, and I don't think so. I think. No, not, not right now. I see the beginnings of that somewhat. But I don't think we really have been either. Right. Now, you're a member of CAG, right? Mm -hmm. Have you attended their meetings? Yes, I have. So what is it like? Yeah. Um, it's been very positive. Um, I've been getting a lot out of it, um, out of the meetings and uh, out of certain things. But um, Are we being honest at the CAG? And the CAG's a great, great idea. It's a great organization. But are we being honest in this collective? Do you feel like everyone should be as, uh, uh, being as honest as they should, or they just want they don't want to hurt each other's feelings? 
that's a good question. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> no, like, you yeah. know what? That is a good question, but at the same time, I don't know if we really. I we we've just started um, getting in the midst of um, starting workshops right. and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So I haven't seen too much of the critical side right. or the you know right you know right now it's still I guess you know pat on the back right a little bit right. kind of you right. know what I mean. I like, mean we've haven't. I mean, you're great. No, you're so, great. For, no, you're great. Yeah. But um, you know. But I still think CAG is an amazing thing. I it think is. It's a great thing. I've been very, very lucky to be a part of it, yeah. actually. Is this your politically correct statement? No. Is this the whitewash? <laughs> it isn't. No, no. I, I have been very CAG lucky. Is but the greatest ever. <laughs> no. But. Yay, cat. No. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. You're going to get it now. <laughs> Rob Ross is boom no. no, no. I mean, I'm very lucky to have, you know, been in the beginnings of it. Right. I mean, look. We're, know, we're, I mean, we're ju- it's just starting out. We're big supporters of Keg. Yes. Uh, you know, every time Keg has a meeting, they have it on a day after work, and it pisses me off. And they always tell you two days before. <laughs> I always get the email from James, who's a, the New York coordinator. Oh, you need James, to do a better job of, of soliciting this, James. You need to be doing a better job of not telling me two days before. All right? Because I will need to know at least a week in advance Hence to get the, the critical day off. portion. Here's the critical, right, James? <laughs> Handle your business, right? This is the part that's not being so. But we but, love you. Yes, James. Well, we love you. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> Freaking James. <laughs> so this is no. My thing is, you know, I love He's CAG. I, I love the idea of CAG. I love the. I mean, I I love the guys in CAG. I mean, I think you know um, Keith Murphy and Mark Mez and and and, and um, Bob Sodaro and um, uh, James Rodriguez. James and Philip Clark. I think Philip. You know, when he went yes. to L.A., he did. I mean, he was in California. He did a great job of starting movement over there. Right. I mean, I think it's a great, great, great idea i think it's a great great organization it has the potential to be great but i think with anything everyone needs to start telling the truth i think with everything Mm -hmm. we need to be able to be mentors and say and i think that idea for workshops is great because it's an opportunity Mm -hmm. for the the more experienced guys to give the more the more aspiring novice guys uh, uh, a tool or you know say look uh, you might not have had the education um as i did you know, I think the guys who are leading the pack should be the mentors and, and, and lead these workshops and say, this is the platform or this is the recipe for, for putting a, a script together. And, you know, this is these are the things that we're looking for. These are the beats. And I think there should be a specific criteria to getting into CAG. Right. And that's what I'm saying, that I think we're starting to see the beginnings of that. This right. is all just starting out. Right. So, you know, the work, the workshops have yet to, to start and uh, things of that nature. So I think we're going to be starting to see that good yeah i mean so. yeah i mean i think that's that's what it needs i mean i mean i speak to keith um through email and i know he's tried contacting me over the phone sorry keith i barely check my voicemails on i always check my my cell phone so if you don't have that i'll give it to you <laughs> but you know we talk about and there's some things that we're talking about doing um mm-hmm. collectively between cast the craze and cag and everything and um but I think in order for its so ultimate survival and, and, and return on investment, they, they, it has to be more critical mm-hmm. of the, the content, the, the, the creators, and, and the packaging. Um, so this way it can lead the independent movement as the epitome. You, know, you, want, you want people 10 years later to study CAG. Right. You want colleges to use it as a, as, as a reference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it should go. You know, right. And that's that's just me. I don't think small. I think global, and I think that's what it, it needs to be in order to get there. Those are the, some of the things that need to accomplish. Right. You know. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was watching. I mean, it's a different medium, but this is PC politically correct, and um, dealing with entertainment, and they had interviewed black actors about prejudice in the in the movie world, mm-hmm. and they interviewed John. Dan Cheadle, and they asked him, what do you think about, you know, um, racism and trying to break in? And what his answer was, I was very surprised. He said, in all truth, as a community, overall, we have to bring the quality of the product up. He said, I'm not necessarily saying that Friday isn't a good medium for what it is. But he said, if you want people to take you seriously, mm. barbershop ain't going to get it done. Friday yeah. ain't going to get it done. You yeah. know? And he said, to be honest, 
I'm an actor, and I gotta tell you, most of the stuff that has came out has been crap. Mm -hmm. And this is a seasoned actor that was saying that. This mm -hmm. most of the stuff that that, well, has, that came has been out, presented I, to him. I wouldn't yeah. go watch. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but and, same, and it's like that. At you the know, same time, time I mean, in relation you to gotta look at what it you were saying. I mean, um, Friday is entertainment. It's just funny. Um, and and it, it wouldn't have stood the test of time. It wouldn't have gone up to next Friday or the Friday after next um, if if people didn't want to see it. Um, you know they they've they've sold enough um, tickets and and DVDs to 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 pay for the sequels and people went to see it. I mean it isn't it isn't sending a message. It's just it's just it's just ghetto humor. Um, and it's just it's funny. I mean, come on. I mean, you got not the you know out, but you know Chris you know, uh, Tucker. He's like, hey, you know this man. No, it's, it's funny. A, I mean, but that, if that's you want to be I mean, taken, you know what I'm you saying? Know? If you're looking for a more serious role, right? And more serious media. But, but you can't say that work. because look at look at no you know? look at Ice Cube. Come on, Ice Cube has played diverse roles. You know, in, in, in film. I mean, you can't say that. I mean, he was in Triple X. He was um, he was in I forget the name of the movie. Um, Are we there yet? Is that was that it? I, the one, oh, he's in that comedy that's coming out. Yeah. I mean, he's done diverse. It hasn't hurt comedy. him. It hasn't hurt him. Why? Because he makes money for the industry. They, they executives see him as a bankable commodity. Yeah. So, it, but, it's, it's, but it's what comedy. might work for him might not work for Don Cheeto. So you can't say that. I mean, I think it's all relative. I, mean, I think it's it all depends on who you ask. You know, saying because we're never gonna, no one's ever gonna agree a hundred percent. You know, what I think is, I think yes, I think culturally. We need to represent a specific way, mm -hmm. but at the same time, does it, it does it put a stop on freedom of expression, on your creativity, mm -hmm. by you conforming to the norm? Does it stop your creativity, your creative flow? No, Are you not being who you were supposed to be? What his argument mm -hmm. is, and I do agree, is he said if you want a different medium, you have to create... A, a solid foundation in that medium. He said there's nothing wrong with those films. But what he's saying is, if you want them to take your writing serious as a solid drama, then everything can't be kind of stick type of work. But that's not that's comedy. That's comedy. And that's, and, and that's, you know what I'm saying? That's just but that's, media I mean, that's, 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 that's if someone's looking for a specific purpose in his career. You know what I'm saying? You want to be known as a dramatic actor or a dramatic writer. That's what you're going to focus on. But if you want to be a diversified creator, which I believe Ice-T is, he's a creator. He, he, he's able to, he, he can wear many hats. He's a comedian. You know what I'm saying? And he does what he feels is best for him. And it works for him. He has that magic that works for him. He sells tickets. He, he makes it happen. You know, Don Cheadle sp picks specific roles. That, what, that's what works for him. You know what I'm saying? George Lucas, an innovator. Uh, he did what Don Cheadle has a lot more yeah. range than Ice Cube. I mean, not to get the breakdown of that's, film, that's your opinion. That's range. your opinion. Melissa. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, you know, everyone. Uh, who do you think? Who's Melissa? No. Melissa. Me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry. Jonathan Syphax from Facts. Wait, kill the, kill the record. We got to start over. No, we not. No, you can't. It no, goes no, straight through. Do. Sorry. No, you got it. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Boston. Continue. We gotta start over. No, we're not. No, hey, we're ready. Twenty that. minutes into it. Sorry. <laughs> no. Keep going. Edit. Jonathan edit, side facts, fun facts for edit. you no, folks. You have hey, to Melissa, how that. are you? I'm sorry, <laughs> Michelle. I do today, Michelle. I messed up. You gotta start over. <laughs> no, let's continue. Um, this is good. You gotta start over. Sorry, this is live. Hi, Santa. Good job. I'm gonna have the NAACP killing me. Yo, Michelle's gonna kill me. I mean, Melissa's got Melissa. to say, oh, yeah, I mean, Melissa, God. he corrected himself and said Melissa again. That, that will be <laughs> my nickname <laughs> from now on. Michelle <laughs> Melissa Martinez. You are going to be a testament to John. Oh, man. No. He you said, I'm sorry, Michelle. I mean, Melissa. <laughs> no. You got to you gotta start this whole Sorry. Like, it's done. I got to it. It's done. It's done, dude. That's it. It is what it is. Oh, okay. Come on. Let's get back to it. Let's continue. What were you going to ask me? I'm not saying nothing. Right. <laughs> on right you got Yo, it. You got it. Come on, Joey. Continue. Come on. All right. So anyway, Come on. but anyway, I do think that I think we we're all being too nice. In the independent world, I mean, the the, the nice is just so it's getting it's getting so damn nice. Are you it, gonna really keep this? It's, it's, forget it's this. Just forget unbearable. the topic. You gonna really keep this? Keep, keep it, man. You gotta be kidding me. Yes. Keep people together. Keep. 
No, dude, it's done. So anyway, but yeah, I mean, I don't think we're all being. I mean, and 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 so, and we we had a conversation about Eisner Awards. You know what I mean? They're keeping it real because they they keeping you know they they're really making everybody you know, want to be considered, elevate your game. So when you sit there wondering why you didn't get up there, but then you got to revisit your yourself and your product right. and, and and your your game plan and your marketing strategy and all that other stuff and what am I not doing? So yeah, I mean, I, in a sense, I do think that we you know in the industry. People are look what happened to um the um radio host um I miss I miss he screwed up he That's I think I think I think he thought he was in a bar with his boys yeah I, I think he forgot he was on the air and forgot the microphone yeah was on. and um, when he made that statement and his producer there is freedom of expression right but there is there's no tolerance for abuse mm-hmm. and 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 I just said Ice T was bad on there. You gonna get shut down tomorrow? So. <laughs> I, I suggest you. Oh! I, won't suggest you I won't get shut down because we're not we're not up there in the work the scale to be shut down. But at the same time, Ice T, I think, is a talented individual. I've said it before. You just don't agree because you know you 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 follow Ice-T trends. Ice Cube, Ice Cube, Ice T, both, both, uh, both of them. even Ice you Lemonade. See, how, See, how you fix yourself? Ice T, perfect. You took a guy who went from you know See, cop killer and pimp. You were cop killer. Pimp, you know his his songs, you know. I mean, he gangster rapper, and went from there to Law and Order. True. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you took this guy who, I mean, these guys understand what they want. He's a businessman. He's a talented actor. Uh, you know, he knows what he wants in life. And and just because he was a gangster rapper doesn't mean he can't act. You know what I'm saying? Just because he was a pimp doesn't mean he can't act. But he doesn't hide who he is today. But that's a little more right. I mean, come on. He's being interviewed. He hasn't changed a damn bit. I mean, he he's in an interview. His his wife, she's blonde. She has a butt bigger than J Lo, and he says he goes he go he goes. He I don't goes, think he so. tells her to turn around. I disagree with that. He tells her to turn around, and he goes. You know what that's for? He goes. I'll try to blow out her back, and he says it on national television while he's being interviewed. So it's crazy. So, but but this is him. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's Ice T. Look at Method Man, for example. He went from Wu Tang. Plan to Garden State. Yeah. What in mm. the world? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You want it, to talk about range? You want to talk about? And he's done other things besides Garden State. That he's done so many other diverse things in terms of film. Right. And you know, and at the same time, he's keeping it real. Right. You know? I mean, and, and I mean, and that, that that's the term that I want to talk about because keeping it real doesn't mean you have, to, you have to keep it real stupid. You know, keeping it real means all right. You want to stay true to who you are and your character. That's fine. But there's no reason, no reason why you need, you can't be an example for the next man. Mm-hmm. There's no reason why you can't open doors for the next man. There's no, and there's no reason why you need to hurt anybody in the process by keeping it real. Keeping it real doesn't mean you have to be a thug. Keeping it real doesn't mean you have to be a jerk. You know, keeping it real doesn't mean that you have to be ignorant. Right. You know, keeping it real means keeping it real. This is who I am. I'm black and white. That's it. There's no gray. You know what I'm saying? I started this way. I'm gonna end this way. It doesn't mean I'm gonna hurt anybody in the process. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna advocate drugs. I'm gonna advocate murder. You know what I'm saying? So it's that that statement for me. You know, you know, re- hits home because you know you hear that all the time. And you know, like I can go back to the block and I see the same guys that I grew up with, keeping it real. Ghetto. You know, keeping it real. And you know, what I mean by that is like they're still drinking the forties by the park. They're still fighting. You know what I'm saying? They're still strapped. You know, they're still getting ready. You know, they're still ready to do what they shouldn't be doing for the sake of keeping it real. This is one, you know, shut up, yo. That's it. You know, and that's not what life is about. You know what I'm saying? So, I think when you want to you keep it real, keep it real smart. Mm-hmm. For me, that's what I mean. I mean, keep, keep it real by moving forward. Don't go backward. Don't stay stagnant. Move forward. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and do something to impact others. You know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, so I don't know, in, in comics and in music and, and, and everything, I mean, everything's relative in a sense. I mean, there's, everything can relate in a sense to different in one, in some ways and then the same in the others. And, but the industry is down, it is basically dictated by, by money. Any, any industry is dictated by money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You want, just like, come on, NFL, you know, football. You want that prime retail spot. You're gonna pay. You're gonna call for millions of dollars for a 30 second commercial spot during the games. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. But you know you get that, especially during halftime. You get that commercial spot. You're, you that's it. 
you know, you're going to get that those people because you got millions of viewers. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's money talks. If not, stand on the side and say, you know, hello, how are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One day I'll be in there. You know what I'm saying? And if you are an independent publisher and whatever you're doing independent-wise and, you, and you, you, you hate the industry and you hate the big guys, but you haven't done anything to change your life, what does it say? What's that saying? Mm-hmm. What is that old saying? What is that? If you can't saying? beat them, join them. Join them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that you guys. Would. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you I'm, got, like, I'm like, a yes, mind Sam? is a terrible What thing, is that right? saying? For what? Yeah. what? I'm looking. At, you can't beat them, join them. It's like you know, like yeah. Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them. No way to fold them. But how do you do no that? No way to walk while away. keeping your integrity, and your, your, your artistic integrity. Let's say you're a creator mm-hmm. and you want to do, I don't know, some like crazy <clears throat> acid trip kind of like blow your mind kind of thing. Like, and what? you find a company that 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 that, okay. that relates to that specific genre. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like a like a heavy metal. You know, you go and find. Thank you. Here we go. You, this is what I want to tell you. You go and find a company that will cater to that market. Right. You know, our crumb had a specific market. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, so you, 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 there's something for everybody. And if you can't do it on your own, well, it's time to face reality and say, dang, walk in there, put your best suit, your birth, birthday suit on, get your portfolio packaged perfectly, mm-hmm. and go in there and sell yourself. Yeah, and say, you know what? I want to be part of your way, movement yeah. because I can't move Jack. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't even move my sofa across the room. So can you help me? You know, exploit my my talents through your, how you know your 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 right. But in an era where even something like heavy metal has been whitewashed, you know what I'm saying. Right. But there's always a there's always a company that has the same reach, okay. not the same popularity, but the same reach. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because heavy metal basically was the the, the epitome. It was. The you know what I'm saying? Epitome. Everybody else, you know, fueled from that. But there's always going to be a market. Before that, there was a '70s underground comic right. movement in San Francisco. And come on, if you were uh, if you're an adult content creator, mm-hmm. whether it's you know you know printed material, right? And they say you and you walk into a heavy metal and they say, well, you know, it's just too racy for us now. Mm-hmm. That's not who we are now today. Yeah. You know, they're doing more fantasy for Zeta types, or whatever the case is. Right. You say, all right. You ever think about the porn industry? And say right. this is you know you know you find a you know big porn producer and the people listening I'm I'm sorry kids if you're listening but we just we just <laughs> this is all just business and you say you know what you guys ever and you pitch that idea if you're under eighteen don't listen yes mom you may have to have a disclaimer <laughs> on the show after so yes long. moms take you your kids out of the room 18, but please. no yeah but no you go to I the porn industry the going to hell you know you you call hustler magazine that's what I'm talking about you call hustler magazine you right. call Maxim whatever it is and you say look I have you ever think of putting like adult con- comics? comics. Yeah, you say uh, you're adult, uh, putting yeah. adult yeah. comics inside your book, in your magazine. Know. You know, maybe I can have the te- you know you could you know, I can have the back two pages if you think it's you know deemed worthy of your 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 your, your, your magazine, and you submit it, mm-hmm. and they might say you know what you're right I like this, let's make it a constant, let's idea. sign a contract. Yeah. Yes, so you don't know you until know you try. Door, you, yeah, you never know what doors you may be blowing open. Right. So to speak. <laughs> I'm sorry. Literally. Um, <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> I'm Security. <sorry>. Um, <laughs> good stuff. So- Put the, the clap sound effect for that comment. So you like Melissa's comment? Clap sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Good stuff. <laughs> so, no, but I'm saying is, I mean, you don't know until you try. And I, I, okay. I've had this debate with members of my organization many times. Mm-hmm. And where. You know, where people assume they know the response from an industry executive, whatever it is. You don't know the response until you go and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. So shut the f and do it. You know what I mean? That's my thing. It's like, don't assume this is what's going to happen. Well, then they're going to say, we're doing it right. Or they're going to say this thing. Go and find out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. I didn't know. I know. I went, I contacted the Jersey Journal and I said, you know what? Boom, here's a book. Who know? Two months later, they're going to contact me. We're going to give you a full feature and we get a full page. Uh, in the Jersey Journal. You know what I mean? You don't know until you do. I contact a radio station and just say, you know, read it. If you like it, you know, give me a call. Who knew they're going to contact you back until you did? You know what I'm saying? You don't know until you do. So don't say you know what's going to happen because nobody can dictate the future. No one can dictate anybody else's response. You can try to do it, but you're just doing a disservice to yeah. you and your product. Go out there, get it done, make the excuses afterwards. That's what I've been saying. There's a, a lack of that now. Right. 
because everybody wants to, like you said, it's all about an almighty dollar now. Right. And everybody's being too formulaic. Mm -hmm. And they're not wanting to take a chance anymore. Right. right. You know. What I, you know, and uh, I spend, let's say, three weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. Three weeks out of the year, I do mail outs. And that means I have to sit down and create proposals. I got right cover letters, so this, you know, whatever it is, I have to do the research and find out who I'm going to target, you know, with in the in the media, and I put these packages together, and I'll spend an entire day folding envelopes, packaging it, stuffing it, boom, 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 thinking about it. If it's a children's related magazine, if this woman, you know, you know say Nickelodeon magazine or whatever, I'll put it in a cover, uh, colorful packaging and to make it look present so it stands out from all the other mail and blah 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 I think about every the element of that stuff and I'll go and I'll wait in line at, a, at, a, at, the, at the post office for four hours and I get there with, you know, with 50 envelopes and I gotta wait till they weigh everything and at the end of the day I'm paying $200 for all the shipping or whatever mm -hmm. but and there's no guarantee that someone's gonna say alright let's contact them let's do a story but if I got one of them I did my job right. I lost capital mm -hmm. but it's 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 worth the investment when you get the exposure. But you don't know unless you do. But you gotta know who you're talking, you just can't just throw it out there. You gotta know you gotta make the contact, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta call them up with a follow up phone call. Say, Hey, I just wanna you know, my name is Sam or whatever, whatever. And then, you know, I am I run my own company, um and two companies, you know, Catch a Crazy Crazy Comics. And but when I call a corporation I don't say, um, uh, hello, uh, is there someone, uh, I, I could, I, I could talk right. to about, um, no, I say, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. I say, hi, how are you? You know, my name is Samuel Vera. I represent mm -hmm. right. Crazy Comics. I'm the v president of the publishing house, blah, 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 blah. I, mean, I have a product that I want to, I'm seeking licensing. I want is there someone I can speak to within your organization? Hold on. Let me transfer you to our senior vice president of international marketing. Mm -hmm. Boom. Hey, how are you? Money, blah, blah, blah. Hey, Jim, blah, blah. We start talking, blah, blah. And anyway, we, we are, you know, I'm, I'm in the city. My office is down the block. They don't know that. You know, maybe I could take you out for coffee and we could talk. Right. Sure. Boom. Now, you take them. Boom. You buy them lunch, whatever it is. And you sit down. You, now you created an inn. But you, you can't meet them wearing your jeans and your all-stars, even though I love rocking my all-stars. <laughs> you have to go in there. You, yeah, can, you know, right. you got to go in there in your suit. You have to go there, you know, with your game face on right. and no strings attached. Don't bring your product with you. Just have a conversation. Okay. Yeah. And you sit down, you're talking to another businessman, blah, 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 whatever the case is. You know, so, you know, what is it that you're looking for? What is your company looking for? But well, because I have a product in mind, I think it will it'll fit your, 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 your corporation and, and where you're going you know, for the future. Okay, boom. Well, let's set up a meeting. We'll set up a pitch. You come in and you bring your team or whatever it is. Whatever it is it is that, that they want you to do, you do. If they say mail it in, mail it in. If they say, oh, just, you know, you know what? You have somebody drop it off my office. Whatever the case is, do it. Get it done. You know what I'm saying? Don't waste. Don't make them walk away carrying anything because this is a senior level executive. You want to make right. sure that you just engage them, you win them, you get their trust, and you walk away with a business card of a senior vice president of promotions and marketing of the Cartoon Network. You uh -huh. want to make sure that you walk away with this person's contact because you just created a right. network. You just networked. Right. You just opened a door that would have never been opened any other way. Right. But if you go in there and you doubt yourself and you doubt your product and you doubt your image and it's not ready, you can hurt yourself because right. that person will never answer that phone call again. You know, yeah. that next next time when they see that, that external number, they're going to have their office rep, office manager pick it up. That person going to pick it up and they're going to say, um, no, I'm sorry, they're out to lunch. Oh, I'm sorry, they're away for the week. Oh, I'm sorry, they're in Korea. Oh, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's just sending it in the mail. And it's never going to get to them. So make sure you're ready. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's those kind of things where I remember... I made one phone call once, and that was me. I was that stuttering jerk, and I was just like, uh, 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 you know, and <laughs> I could never get that phone call uh, and, and, and phone answered again. I waited a year later. I went back, and I said, yo, dude, you know what? I am a corporation. You know, I pay my taxes. I have a business. I just say, yeah, I am the president of my damn company, you know? How you doing? My name is Sam I'm the president of Great. Bam! Mm -hmm. I had an open-door policy right there. Wow. One executive to the other. Right. I don't have stock options. I don't have 401k. I don't have any of that stuff. But because of the title and because I had a product that had a package that was ready for them to see, whatever the case is, but I wanted to engage them. What's your opinion? I have a product, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, what is 
what is your your action plan for 2007? You know, I asked them. You know, so where are you guys going with your with your licenses? Are you going towards the you know the younger audience, or are you, you going another avenue? Because mine fits a specific market, you know, and uh, and they change. You know, the market changes all the time. You, know, you might have a company investing in Batman today, but next, tomorrow they're gonna invest in Ninja Turtles. You know what I'm saying? So. And you gotta you gotta see what it is they're gonna put the capital on, and so you know what I'm saying. You gotta make sure you fit that profile for that company. Right. You can't just call them because it's Fox. I want to get in. You know what? Who in Fox? You know you don't want to just call any Fox executive. There's specific people that handle specific things. You know, do your research. And that's one other thing. <laughs> no one likes to do the research. That pisses me off. No one wants. Everybody wants an easy way out. Oh, I'm gonna get this done. And there's no research. There's legwork involved. And if you're not willing to commit, quit. That's it. You don't want to commit, quit. That means you got to, and, and, and we were talking to a guest on the show previously, Rich Benatovich, and, and, and he said the ugly part of the business is everything else that you got to do that you don't want to do. And that's basically what it is. You have to do your research. You have to go out there and say, all right, I'm going to target Paramount Pictures. Why? Because they're, they're a Hollywood movie-making company. Why do you want to go after them? Who are you going to go after you know, mm-hmm. is this, is what you trying to pitch to them is something that they're investing in now? Right. Is that, what, is that part of their 2007 plan? If not, you're going to hurt yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's those kind of things where if you're not willing to do your homework, if you don't have someone on your team who's doing that homework, you're going to hurt yourself, mm-hmm. you know? So I believe everybody wants, wow, I believe everybody wants it spoon fed to them but they don't want to have to clean yeah. up the mess and they don't want to prepare the food you know it's like everybody wants to go to the restaurant because god forbid i have to sit in the kitchen and go to the grocery store buy all the ingredients buy all the food go to the kitchen put it all together prepare it bake it cook it whatever it is and then i have to clean up the dish. no one wants to do that they just want to have the meal and walk away mm-hmm. you know that's part of the process right you know what i'm saying so i don't know it's just that's just me people are like damn you're an angry you're an angry man. <laughs> He's like, dang, Sam, you is angry. I ain't angry. They're like, what happened to Sam? He liked everybody. And he, nah, man. He, he was so happy before. It's a new model. I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth. And I expect you to tell me the same. I mean, that's it. Let's just be honest gone. with each other. You know what I'm saying? You know, people come up to us, you know, and, 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 and I, Where have I, all the flowers I, gone? I hear it. I hear it all the time. Why are you telling them that? Why are you telling them the truth? Because it's the truth. People, you know, even guys on my team say, "Why are you telling them? Why are you it's doing that?" Because for? it's the truth. You come to me. You ask me a question. I'm gonna be open with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I got nothing to hide. There's no secrets. You know, you were talking about this book called The Secret that Jonathan's reading, right? No. He goes, "Oh, the book is so great." Blah blah blah. I said, "What about the truth?" I said, "You whisper with the secrets, and I'll speak out loud with the truth." And it, I was just being sarcastic, but I'm like, you know what? And it, and it resonates in reality. You know what I mean? I said, you know, everybody in, you know, is sugarcoating things. Everybody is trying to be friendly with each other. Nobody wants to, to make noise. You know what? Why does Howard Stern stand out from the rest? Because he calls it as he sees it. You know Howard Stern's a perv. You know Howard Stern loves, loves women. He loves porn. You know, he's a, you know, but you, you know what you get with Howard Stern. Wendy Williams. She calls it like she sees That's it. You good. know why? You know why? Because she's black and white. She's going to tell you straight up to your face. You know, she's not going to hide around it. So it's one but of those that's things a where... That's point, though. Let, let me interject something really quick. Yeah. The point you made was very good. Whatever stance you're going to make, you have make to go full force and make that stance. How would Stern let you know, I'm going to let it out just like it is? So you're not going expecting him to be sugarcoating. So, in other words, you can't give expectations or project images to people... And then kind of slide flip the those script. images and flip the and script. Flip it. Right. You know, if you're going to be honest, be honest. Right. If you go and play PC, be PC. Right. But there's no gray when you talk about just the gray on your shirt. Say. It's the gray on my shirt. Just, I like this shirt. Yeah. This is, it's not a Brooks Brothers, but it looks like it's it. not a Brooks I'm Brothers. Not very happy about the shirt. <laughs> but, you know, no, but you're absolutely right. You know, you go and stand a line, stand it. Yeah. Or get off. Stand and deliver. That's yeah. all I'm saying. There you go. Stand and deliver. You know, we're going to cut to a, a break, and when we come back, we're going to continue with this this lively conversation, and we're going to hear more from uh, Melissa Martin. And uh, th- I'll be back in a second. Yes. <laughs> Melissa <laughs> Martin. There's nailing in my toilet. Oh, hey, uh, now nah, I'm just doing a little comic book shopping. Interesting choice. Nah, this is for my son. 
I'm trying to get him to read more in this independent comic book company called Crazy Comics. Crazy Comics? Yeah, I've heard of them. They have titles like Cosmic Wars and Rush 5377. Yeah, and a title called Forbidden, but, but that's for me. Anyway, the great thing about this company is that they make a conscious effort to promote reading for kids. Yet their stories are so smart and funny that even an adult can enjoy them. I know what you mean. Just look at the back of this book. A glossary of terms and cool questions about the solar system. I'm sold. There's an alien in my toilet. Hey, hey, get over here. You just took the last one. Sorry, but don't worry. You can go online at crazycomics.com. They have an eBay store you can buy all types of cool stuff from comics to t-shirts. See you later and catch the craze. For centuries they've hidden, lost forever to the world. Buried beneath the confines of a curse cast upon the sins of their father. Now... One will challenge that very curse which has enslaved a people, standing in opposition of a mighty ruler, a revered king, defying all that has been built to protect them. One man, one vision, one chance to escape the evil or risk destroying everything. Walk with me as I take you on a journey into the forbidden. Visit crazycomics.com for more. Defense Epic Series Forbidden. Okay, we're back, and um, so we're talking about um, you know political you gotta correctness. Gotta introduce yourself again. That man went got a coke or something. You have a coke and a smile. Crazy man, Vera. Shout out to the psycho sci-fi. Michelle. St. Martin. Michelle hey, no. Melissa Martin. Michelle in the house. Don't you dare. Michelle in the house. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, I'm writing that name down. So. <laughs> don't feel bad. I, I mean, got like Jonathan, early yeah, don't, don't worry about bad. me. If you go to the forum, Jonathan, Jonathan makes forgets everybody's names on the forum, <laughs> even though it says it right there. <laughs> this topic started by Digital Sword. He'll put Digital Webbing. <laughs> You know, he responded to another guy that, but it was my me who was made the comment. He goes, "Oh, you're right, Digital." Yo, what's up with your and pencils, was, yo? They don't work. Oh wait, <laughs> you, know, you so, are actually writing it down. I do not yeah, believe it. Yeah, he's the worst. <laughs> the worst. Um, I got like early Zolzheimer's. One L. I'll give you my business card. How do okay. you like early Zolzheimer's. Okay. Um, See, that was a trick. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Be honest. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Be honest. It was a trick to get the hey, it took him. It took him a year to remember that this is the Cast the Craze show, not the Crazy Comic show. <laughs> you know, so I don't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he chased down. He chased down fans at the New York Comic Con with the microphone. He goes. He goes. <laughs> You're on the Crazy Comic show. And I'm like, oh snaps. Oh hey, no. Yeah, five, and don't feel no bad for him because George did it too. George signed off on video. To the audience, he goes, This is George the Crazy Man Vera. And I'm like, hey, No, you're not. He's George the Dreamer Medina. I'm like, What's the matter with you people? Medina. He didn't want to be known as the Dreamer, May. though. Huh? He didn't like that tag name. That's what that is. It's was. on his contract. He has well, no choice. You kept, you kept saying it. <laughs> Sorry. He hated that name. W CDC Radio says that he has to go by that name. That's it. Wow. <laughs> you should change that so, name. So, so anyway, so, um, we're talking about political correctness. I don't know. So, what do you see? Do, do you see any of that in, like, with Marvel or DC or Image? Um, Image? No, I don't see that. Marvel, DC, DC less than Marvel, and I don't know whether it's because they have Vertigo or you know, as a as a what is a subdivision, or or what? But you know, Marvel. Mm, I don't know. I don't think they want to. They tried with Civil War, but yeah. I <laughs> see. I can't. I, I'm, I, I can't, just can't get into Marvel. I mean, I, not I can't Marvel, either. not for the sake of Marvel, but I just can't get into gimmicks. You know, and I think they do a lot of gimmicks with yeah. their books, and they do a lot of tie-ins and crossovers. And all that. I just can't get into it. I love, I love stories that mean something, not for the sake of selling units, but just mean something. And um you know, I I've, I followed Spawn for many years. You right. know, and and it's not like Tom McFarlane was changing Spawn because he was trying to find an angle to mm -hmm. to sell books. He stood to the, with the truth with Spawn, and he continued forward, and he still sells units. Right. Um, is he selling two hundred thousand units? No, he's probably selling like forty thousand or thirty thousand. Right. But he's still selling units. He still has a fan base. Um, but it's you know I like stories with heart. You know, I picked up this book right here from Image Comics. Um, let me pull that out. 
the, oh, this isn't it, but um, The Walking Dead. Robert oh, Kirkman. Yeah. Good book. Um, really, Kirkman, really good right. book. I picked up another mm-hmm. trade. Yeah, that's what I said. <coughs> don't listen. Um, I picked up another trade. <laughs> uh, I don't have it on me right now, but I picked up this other trade. Um, what the hell is the name? I can't believe it. Um, but it's going to be at the book of the month. I just happened to be in Midtown Comics. I was going through the trade section. I saw this book and I, I read the synopsis and I was like, wow. And I've never heard of this. And I said, I love, you know, this you know, it sounds good. And I went home and I read it and I was like, wow, I really enjoyed this. And, um, you know, I said, it's definitely a book of the month. And, um, uh, you know, it's it. I love things with heart and with meaning, not gimmicks, not not promotional things, not things that's going to sell money, you know, units. It's. I think that's what happens with independence too, because um, that re- that that somehow trickles over and spills over to our world because mm. we look at the gimmicks that they're doing, we want to create gimmicks. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. You know, we want to do things, and you know, I remember somebody challenged me on the forums because I used to come up with um, um, one-liners. Because you, know, you have to have a forum topic, you know, and and you know, so I would have these one-liners that would drive them into opening up that 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 post right. and looking at and reading my press release or whatever I'm doing, and they would assume it's one thing, but when they open it up, they read something else, and they're like, you know, you know, stop with the gimmicks and all this stuff, whatever, you know, right. tell, you know, just tell what it is, and is that you know, because I would always put some crazy, you know, you know, things in there, these pitches, right, and I'm like. I've become gimmicky, you know. I'm, I'm trying because I there really want. I, I did my job in getting them to open it up. Formulaic, right, gimmicky, right? Blah, and blah, that's blah, like blah, you know, yada, and yada. I said, because if I put if I put you know crazy comics, you know, new release, did in my toilet, they were like they 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 they're like oh you know we don't want to know about crazy comics, but if I put you know you know you know flushed away you know the, the, you know, the flushed away whatever blah blah, blah you know in 2007 mm-hmm. they're gonna Oof, what's that and then boom they open it up and it's a press release for you know from crazy comics right. like, all oh, these bastards they did it again <laughs> and uh so for a while i was getting a lot of backlash you know and i'm like yo just shut up you know you can read it or you don't you know why are you trying to stop me from you know making things happen for myself you know you hate her i just want to knock you out so anyway um it, it, it was one of those things where i'm like I, th- I was debating back and forth with all these you know comic geeks on the net and i just got tired of it so i said ah, f- you know forget it you know what it's not worth it i'm just gonna I, and i and i they i broke and i said i'm just gonna, just gonna put you know official press release blah blah, blah. and um but I realized I was becoming, you know, and I was always coming with strategies. And like, all right, how can I get this? You know, you know, boom, how can I get the attention? How can I get this? But, you know, it's, we all fall for that. And we all want to sell right. something. And we all want to catch your attention. Because you think about it. In these web communities, all these forms like comic book resources and news drama, where they have millions of subscribers or hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and the the, the the, the new topics are constantly changing every two seconds. Boom, 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 boom. So if you post something now, it's on the top of the page. It's going to mm-hmm. be on page 37 in like 20 seconds. So you want to get that one liner in there that's going to capture that attention right. of all those people, you know, before it, it gets lost in the database. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, how do you do that? You tell the truth and everybody knows you're just an independent. They don't want to know about you. They just let it go by or you, you give some sort of flashy statement, you know, and, um, you know, and it just, you know, it's, 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 it's a thin line you're walking. And, you know, it's like, this is my company. This is, uh, how am I going to sell it? But understand that the people that walk the line are gimmicky. They just don't do it for the gimmicks. In other words, Howard Stern does everything he does for ratings. He doesn't even hide it. He says, but he doesn't have oh, to do anything. ratings? I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't do a show um, saying, well, I'm only going to do it for ratings. In other mm-hmm. words, he, In other words, he won't put a guest on. If he doesn't enjoy the show himself, if he can't have fun with the joke, the show, and he can't feel something from it, but at the same mm-hmm. token, he'll let you know. But I'm not gonna put something on that doesn't bring ratings simply because I like it. Right. You know, there's a business aspect to it. So yeah, like but, you said, yeah, you, but gotta, yeah, you do have to I'm, balance it. Yeah, no, but you, you you're talking about uh, an unknown as opposed to somebody who just his name itself is gonna sell. You know, it's. You know, how do you differentiate yourself from the other guys? You know, what I mean, you yeah. go to you go for instance, you go to Newsarama. You have Talk Newsarama, but then you have Marvel DC in bold letters, where it's all Marvel DC, and it says Independence Light Image Dark Horse, you know, chaos, whatever. And then you got the rest of you guys. So, they're specifically indicated there. Talk Marvel, Talk DC. You go to Comic Book Resources, same thing. Talk Marvel, Talk DC. You go to Civil Books, Talk Marvel, Talk DC. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you got, um, what is it called? Um, 
you know, pimp it here or, you know, um, independent hype or create a hype. You know what I mean? It's where it's seldom, seldomly viewed. The traffic is not as extreme as the other guys. You know what I'm saying? So, you, God forbid you go on a, on, a, on a forum that's based for Marvel and you go and pimp your project there. They'll cut you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's basically. laughs> you know, he's like, yeah. they're going to, me a caveat, me a caveat. So, it's like, you know, um, yeah, it is a challenge for everybody. Um I think independents should embrace each other, but at the same time, should also help each other. And, and and by helping each other, I mean just, you know, mentor each other. If you're more advanced mm -hmm. and if you've done more in the industry or you excelled, I hear motor. Yeah, so do I. Um, <laughs> so. Uh oh. Mm. That they go to have a chainsaw. <laughs> that is wild. Damn it! <laughs> I've had it with your talk. <laughs> that you is too far with the with the independent. Hi, Leatherface. No, How are you? Know, right? But um, this is for calling her Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I think this is a time for us in the world to just be honest with each other. I yeah. think, you know. Uh, I think in all counts, though, you know, even within the genre itself in terms of subject matter. <laughs> That's a good segue. I think he's going to be Michelle the Maniac Martin. That's what yes. he's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but that She's will be crazy. for another show. She's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just about, you know, anything. I mean, the digital webbings and the, the, the dime store productions and the comic book artist guilds and all these other communities that are building an independent revolution. It's also, yeah, I mean, I think it's just about taking chances again. Yes. I don't think many chances have been taken in the recent years, and I think people are afraid, and, you know, I, I just... You know, in a financial aspect, in a creative aspect, it all spills over into everything else, and I just think it's time to stop it. They took a chance with 300. Yeah. Ah. And they, they sure they, did. They opposed the norm in, in yeah. the fundamentals Hello. of making movies, yeah. and How it was you? beautiful. You know, and it was spectacular, and it was it was like a ballet. It was just gorgeous. Yeah, you know, it was and, amazing. And, and the industry executives made them cut the budget by twenty million, and they said, you know, we're afraid of blah blah blah. You know, you know, they they, they scrutinized and criticized, and they weren't sure. But like they, you yeah, know, and they went and they said, you know what, we're going to deliver. We know what we're doing. Like we're I said, there's something bubbling under the surface. I'm, right. I feel an explosion coming on, but. That's just John's gas. Oh, well, but, uh, you know. <laughs> damn pizza. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's bubbling there, but Gilly, something Gilly. needs to come forth and not John's gas. Yeah. I can so. smell it. I can smell it. <laughs> um, you know, y'all should call in to get better treatment for me. <laughs> Your boy, John. <laughs> I'm like flavor, flavor up there. Flavoring the boy John. He had his own show. Yeah, Stop it. Yeah, I had his own show. Oh. Yeah, his <laughs> own show. John has his own show. That's Books with John. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Books with John. Have you seen Books with John? That's funny. <laughs> funny stuff. Funny stuff. Which you made me put laughing. on my on my what you call it on my MySpace? You know what? I had like twenty friends. I think I had twenty friends <laughs> before he put the picture up. I got like one now. No. <laughs> Horrible. No, no, no. I was going to have a date out. this weekend instead of doing the no, show because I got the picture. Check this out. No, no, no. John had seven <laughs> friends on his MySpace. I put up books with John, and all these girls came out of nowhere, and now he has like 28 friends. He is making that up. I swear it went the you. other way around. He is oh, making I swear that you. up. All these, all, all these, ca <laughs> all these Caucasian princesses came out of nowhere and they said, "Mandingo, I love you, I love you," and then it came out of nowhere. I was like, Mandingo, wow. that's what I'm talking about. I was like, Take wow. Take chances, people. <laughs> I couldn't, I'm getting all all the air. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I saw all these. I went, I went, I was his MySpace. Fact, we're gonna put Michelle on the air, on on the spot right now. Hot no. seat, hot seat on Michelle. Uh, why? Come on. Okay, all right, Melissa. I, I don't know. I'm just okay. gonna say that right now. <laughs> Come on, Melissa. Wait, you saw know. Michelle saw the 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 little funny thing you did. That was real funny. The little the pajama books, very funny. The scarf, the pink scarf. I like that. What did <laughs> what did you think when you saw the books for John with me look like I'm sleeping or something? <laughs> what do you think? I Watch. thought you were on crack. <laughs> See, thank you. Thank I, was you. Like, I thought you were laughing. 
sleeping, actually. I was like, he's what? He's sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> it was that funny. Was Sam's idea. Did you laugh? <laughs> he was like, I'm doing this. Did you, you, doing this. Did you like, laugh? Is he laughing? Of course I laughed. But do you it honestly feel that would drive traffic to a website? Yes, it does. Yes. It's funny. Yes. Yo, don't mess with the masterpiece. Yo, the I'm set, the still. set design. <laughs> nice. the I'm, set no, right I am now. not washing anything. I am very honest, and I said yes. The set design, the props, the the the, the wardrobe. I that was great. I, I formulated it was all of it. Yeah. I, I think you should. Leave Even it. the theme song. What do you think about the theme song? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is right. You should play I the say theme song. Leave that. <laughs> you should play the theme song on the I podcast. I don't care what thing. reggae mafia comes at you. Oh yeah, forget it. With, with that. I don't care if the Jamaican mafia themselves because they, hey, what you over. doing? You know, I say leave it. That seems like it was brilliant. So <laughs> guy with dreads yes. from his back to, oh, to Rasta Brock from is going to come like to the door. Predator yeah. 2 is going to come. And just beat the heck out of you. <laughs> yeah. yes, beat down you somebody. That, you're in trouble. Yeah, we're in big trouble now. Goodbye. We are in trouble. And with that, that was funny. I'm telling you, I liked it. Books with John is hilarious. I, I mean, it. yeah. I mean, look at all the look at all. Okay, the, we got you? we got thumbs up from Michelle. I look, will take the hip for crazy. Look at all the Caucasian That's princesses on your form. I am people. Your committed. boy John. Hey. These girls came out of nowhere. They're like, hey, your boy the psycho. They said hi, Full John. Throttle. Whoa. Wait, well, you farted? That's a good phrase. You're good. You farted? What? No. <laughs> your, boy, <laughs> no. Oh, oh. your boy full throttle coming through. Thumbs up from Michelle. We're gonna keep it. Who's Michelle? Oh, but I'm right. going to watch. Who's Michelle? Oh, <laughs> <He's right. laughs> <laughs> See how I get treated. Somebody write in and tell you they love me. I told you gonna I, I need some love. You see how easy it is to manipulate the mind of a Syphax? Wow, that's crazy. I told you we were gonna have hella fun. No, but yeah, it's. I don't know. I I think the industry yeah does need something. Um, I think comics as a Maybe whole. Maybe a super shot in the arm or the butt. Or I just think it's saturated. Yeah. I think I think now's the time to separate the men from the boys. I think now's the time to bring in the or to expose the 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 authenticity and the heart of of different subject matters and just you know bring to light what because mm-hmm. I think what happens is people say all right wow this is working. You know, you know. Today, all the network executives are Good investing point. in the PG Spider Mans and all this mm-hmm. other stuff, whatever. So that's what we all got to do. Mm-hmm. So let's create the Invincibles and let's create this and let's create that and let's create, you know, to so we can sell this. But you know what? There's also an audience for books like, you know, Sentinels or Cosmic Wars or you know, what I'm saying there's 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 an audience or for everything. The Walking Dead. The Walking, you know, the Walking or Dead. Battle right? Pope. Or, you know, you know. whatever. You and, know. and Battle Pope is doing amazingly well. I when I saw it, I was Battle like... Battle Pope. I don't think I this is going to fly too tough. And but. I almost... Oh, I just beat yeah. myself. Really? <laughs> it was too funny. Didn't he write it? Too, I think, yeah. Robert yeah, Kirkman, right? Yeah. I think so. Robert Kirkman but. wrote Battle Pope, right? Yeah, and he wrote Invincible, I Walking Dead. I Battle Pope. I, uh, he wrote everything. Guys I saw everywhere. this, I said, what is this? And then I, was, I read the Tech story jacket, it. the Reaper. Uh, you know how it came to be. It was self-published at first. Hmm. There you go. It was self-published. Yes, and I image remember. Picked it up. And I was, I never saw this before this weekend. And I just, I know I'm a big fan. You never saw it this see, weekend? See, I swear go. to God. Wow. A pope that smokes, drinks. And now I'm going to check it out. Screw yeah. anything that moves. I'm going to check. little old ladies. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Screw political correctness. This is Screw funny. <laughs> <laughs> he see dives in crazy comics. I was showing it to people. I was like, Look at no, this. it's just like uh, I'm finding my contact lens. I was so, like, that's crazy. But it's he just dies. like it's just like what Pixar came out. Not uh-huh. everybody's doing CG animated movies, yeah. but the content is gone. The stories yeah. are gone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Pixar yeah. comes out and creates one hell of a film. You know what I mean? From front to back. I mean, they start with the heart, the meat and potatoes, which is the story. And then they build from there. Then you got all these other guys that came out of nowhere and putting all but these stories together. Up, they write the story. We always have this disagreement. Did Science, they write so the story? no more fun than sci-fi fun facts. No, I'm so, asking. I'm asking you. You're that's a different right? conversation. <laughs> so, Let me get into it now. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, then you have all these companies that say, oh, let's put all this animated film. So what happens? The numbers aren't there. The sales aren't there because there's no heart. 
You know, there's no you know substance about it. You know, it's not like a Disney movie when you grew up and you can watch Cinderella over and over again. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you know, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You know what I'm saying? It's not like The Little Mermaid. You know, um, where they really had to put the heart and talent involved in it. Now everybody's just running to the computer and letting the computer do all the work, but you're not really putting in the uh, talent behind it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem with this industry. Everybody sees something oh, that makes money, run to it. Oh, we forgot yeah. about the basic fundamentals, like um. The story, you know what I'm saying? And the characters, you know, why are they there? You know, it's yeah. it's just frustrating, you know. And I haven't... The last CGI movie I've seen was Invincibles. Mm. Um, and it was that was so funny. I mean, I loved it. And that was the last one I've seen. And that was a long time ago. I love Toy Story, you know. Um, you know, it's... And I thought the whole concept was brilliant, you know. And it's... It's just I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just uh, in a sense I'm annoyed, um, you know, with, with the whole bit. Just in a sense. Yeah, yeah, I am a little frustrated, but you know, I think we have the power to change things. Um, I think w- um, if we go about it the right way, if we think about it as a business, if we don't walk into it with the 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 negativity and saying, "Well, I'm just going to change things because I hate you." Oh, no, yeah, no, I want to change no. it because. I have a voice, and I know that there's a better way of doing things. I agree with that. So that way, the person who's following you capitalizes on that. Mm-hmm. And that becomes the norm for that avenue. You know what I mean? You want to set the trend. You want to set set the movement. You don't want to go in there. and you, I mean, there's so many followers. Where are our leaders? Mm-hmm. Everyone's so afraid to lead. Why? Because it's so difficult to be up in front. Because whenever you get there, someone wants to tear you down. Yeah. There's always going to be those that you're opposing. They're going to do everything in their power to destroy you. But there's also going to be those who support those in power who are going to destroy you. And the non-believers who are going to criticize you. Those who want to follow you are not going to say a word until they see what you can do. Mm-hmm. So you're really standing there by yourself. But then what I find is that when it does break ground, not everybody want to be your friend. Oh, right. You know, I Another told thing, you yeah. you yeah. make it. I you were great. Nice you I believed in you <laughs> since uh, you were born. Yeah. You didn't you slam but a gun? You did <laughs> break ground, door shut after door shut after right. door shut. Right. Right. You know, and it's it's just. I mean, you caught between a rock and a hard place. I mean, that I mean, and, and it goes with, this, with with time. You know, you can go down. You know, the religious route with um, you know Jesus Christ and 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 what he went through. You had his own people doubting him. You had you had the community. You had the people he was trying to make believers or at least let them be opposing him. And maybe he was doing their power to destroy him. People who were too afraid because the norm was to be enslaved. The norm was to be abused. No one, the norm was to be criticized. Now here comes this guy saying, no, you're empowered. You know, God loves you. This is not. And so... Those who couldn't fully grasp that concept and were so used to being whooped or so used to, they said, I'd rather deal with this than have to go through his route because his sounds much, much harder. Yeah. Because now you have to look at yourself. And you got to love yourself. And today, people who really do, you know, they believe what they want to believe. And then you go down, up, you move up in life and you move to the Martin Luther King. So he comes another guy, you know, he was pro man, human. He was pro choice, you know, he wasn't pro-black he was pro-freedom yeah. pro-humanity you know what i mean mm-hmm. but at the same time that was not the norm so here comes this guy again in a situation where he's caught between the rock and the hard place those who want to believe are afraid to those who want him destroyed are going to do everything in the power to do it so it's just with everything you, you mean it, it even you know in the comics you know the image comics they come in they oppose the industry they want it to be the next Number, you know, the icon of the industry. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they had to. They moved back down to a place where they're consistent, but they're still not generating the numbers that the big two do. You know what I mean? They opposed the system for a time. People supported it, but those same followers went back to Marvel and went back to DC. Even the creators went back, with the exception of Tom McFarlane. You know what I'm saying? So it's you know. It's one of those things where, <clears throat> if you're gonna do something, go all the way or don't do it at all. And yeah. if you want, if you're going to sit there and complain about it, put on your pants, put on those work boots. You know what I mean? Or you can follow the rest of your life. Right. You know, you know, in, in the Wizard of Oz, you had the elves, they followed. You know, the, you know, so, I mean, the Munchkins, they followed, you know, so 
Or you can be Dorothy and lead that path and, and, and take that road and, and deal with the witches and deal with the goblins and deal with all that stuff and, and, you know and, and get to Emerald City. If you look at the time, if you're really playing the game to, re- to make money to, just look at a money aspect, so, you know, business aspect. Right now, as you said, the fields are so saturated that you don't have no choice but to break mainstream just to be able to have a, a market within a market. Because everything's so saturated. It's like, if there was no 300, what movie would really break the numbers 300 did other than a Spider-Man? You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it's either you got very traditional mainstream or you have something breaking it off. I don't think you'll ever really break any ground playing the gray. I think the best... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't be afraid to break that. Wow. Yeah. And, and, uh, so many but if you want, and, yeah, and if you if you're an independent and you're struggling and you're saying, you know, why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Whatever. Then you know what? Go in and get a job working for the big two. Mm-hmm. Build a name for yourself. Then go on your own and didn't self-publish. Yeah. Learn from the inside out. Get notoriety. Mm-hmm. Do what you got to do. Then go and self-publish. Because obviously you're not ready to do it now. There you go. You know what I mean? That's a very good. So it's one of those things where, you know, you can sit down and complain about it or you can do something about it. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, I'm not good enough as an independent. Now, how can I be good enough to work for you? Let me fix that up. Go apply. Boom. Get a job. Commit to those deadlines. Deliver on those deadlines. And then get a second job because the first time they're going to give you some sort of what if book or something. You know what I mean? If they hire you at all. You know, and so then you got to deliver on that. Then you gotta go, and then the guy will give you another assignment. Boom! Can you deliver on that? Boom! You gotta be timely. You gotta be fast. You gotta be detailed. You have to have the quality involved, and then build a name for yourself. Build a fan base. Now you can't go in there wanting to draw like Marvel. You gotta draw like you, and you want to make sure that yours is dynamic enough that's gonna catch the attention of those fans. Like yo, if you're this is for an artist. If you're a writer, you want to you're competing with Bendis. Because he basically writes every damn book for Marvel. So, <laughs> so, so, so it's one of those things where it's like, it's one of those things where they saturate the market where, all right, we got a great writer, but now give him everything. But you know what I'm saying? But you got all these other talented writers that you're alienating. You know what I mean? There's other people with voices out there. You know what I'm saying? It's, so this is who you to compete with. You're competing with the man that Marvel gave a couple launch to. You know, we gave him a platinum card, so you can't do no wrong in our eyes. Basically. You can't write a bad book no, no matter what you do. Basically. So that's who you're competing with. Can you compete with that? Robert Kirkman can. Yeah, he could. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he has a track record. He proved it. You know what I'm saying? And so it's one of those, you know, you just got to be, you got to stand, look in the mirror, and, and, and look at yourself. Take a hard look at yourself. Who am I? What am I about? Where am I going? What do I want in life? What am I willing to eat? What do I? What don't I want to eat? And how committed will I be? And don't settle. I mean, regardless of what people say, do not settle. I like that. Don't if, settle. Yeah, if you... Know your worth. Exactly. If you say, you know what? I want to finish this book, Um, have it the very best. Don't listen to somebody saying, oh, you know, don't worry about it. The quality of the story. You got great art. Put it out there. The story may be weak, but the art will sell the book. Because we have heard people say that. Don't worry about the story. The art, all people really care about is the art. They're looking at the art. That's not necessarily true. That's not true. Don't settle on your quality product or where you want to go, what you want to do. Make it well-rounded. Yeah, exactly. Right. And and I'm going to use us for an example. And, you know, it's funny. when we Cosmic Wars, when we released that, was the number one seller for us. For a while, and it's funny. I remember when I did the first book. You know, I used 16 pages, and it ended. And and people said the constant complaint was, "What? I want to know what happens. What happens? You know, it just ended too soon. I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more. I did my job. I delivered." Right. Now I could have gone out and said, "I'm going to go and rush the product and put out all the books real fast so I can get it out." So, I can, but then I screw up, and I can screw up the story, and the heart, and whatever. So I decided, you know what, take it off the shelf right now because. It is more detailed, and it takes, and there's a lot more involved in it because I'm drawing. I was at the time I was drawing several books, mm-hmm. so I said, let me focus on one product at a time. I know that when I release Cosmic Wars, when when the time comes, it'll be the right time to re-release it, and it'll be full distribution, trade paperback, no comic book, no single issues, trade paperback. And but when I want to do it, I want to do it right. 
which means it's, it's going to be the Bible. It's going to have the 3D rendering designs that I do, do to build my world. It's going to have a how to develop, you know, the back end of like, you know, like the Star Wars does with the Star Wars books. It's going to have the sketchbook. It's going to have the director's cut. All that encompassed in a hardcover trade paperback edition is what I want to do with Cosmic War. So I know in order to do that, it needs my full undivided attention. And I'm not willing to do that right now because I can't give it my full undivided attention when I'm running crazy comics and Castle Craze and Disney on my toilet and all that stuff. So I made an honest, conscious decision knowing that I was guaranteed to sell a book and at the conventions, but I, at a certain point, I got to say, quality is more important than just, you know, because what's going to happen is after the third book, they're like, wait, the magic is gone. So I got to make sure that magic continues and I, and I, and I stay true to the, the heart of the story. Yeah, all of a sudden your, your sales drop, right. which we ran into in some situations. We're forbidden. And we're like, why did the sales drop? Because we First rushed it. The was so great. And that was the same yeah. thing. Forbidden was this exact thing, which is why I, wanted, I, I prevented from happening with Cosmic Wars. Forbidden was, you know, we rushed through. The first one, same response. Wow, you know, what happens? What happens? Blah, blah, blah. And then we rushed through part two, you know, and everything was just, we, we rushed it for the sake of getting it out faster and we didn't stop to think about every part of it and whether or not yeah. it's true to the story. And so now, right now, we've learned from all those mistakes and we're, we're committed to putting out quality and taking our time with it. You know, and you know, I was having a conversation with John, and he's like, you know, what's going on with this thing in my toilet? I was like, well, duty hasn't spoke to me, so I can't draw right now. You know what I mean? It's like, right. for me, it has to feel Thank right. Thank you. That's yeah. why I haven't made my move in terms of putting out a comic of my own yet. You know, I, I, I just didn't feel ready. You know mm. what I mean? I'm not going to put out a, a, a comic or a product out there that nobody's going to speak to because it hasn't spoken to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. I, I can't. I can't do that. So until I'm ready, right. you know, then that's, you know, right. that that's going to be the time. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I want to put out a good quality piece of work. Right. And I don't want pe people going around saying, well, what is this? Right. You yeah. know, or <laughs> what the hell is this? Right. right. You know, yeah. tripe. You know right. what I mean? So. Right. And it's, you know, and it's like, with anything, it's like. With doesn't in my toilet, I it's not created the way Cosmic Wars or Forbidden is created, where it already has a script. Mm -hmm. The actual illustration dictates the narrative and the dialogue in doesn't in my toilet, mm -hmm. because I'm sit I could I could be sitting in a room and all of a sudden Duty starts talking and he's interacting with Herman and and and, and the FBI agents are there and I can see it in my head all happening, so I have to immediately write notes. Right. And then I start scribbling and, and, and sketching. And I'm like, all right, here it is. And I got the magic back. Right. And I have to go back, you know, because um, every time, for me, every time I put out a new book, it has to be funnier than the last. It has right. to be it has to be more entertaining than, entertaining than the last. Right. And and I know, and it, it's funny because I sent it over to our management company in California. And the, the third issue. And... Is it the third issue or fourth issue? Fourth issue. Yeah, I can't believe we're up to four. And uh, so <laughs> that's that's an accomplishment. That's amazing. Hercules, wow. Hercules. And uh, <laughs> so so I said to my management company, the fourth issue, and the guy, the the statement was, I'm sitting here in my office in the corporation. I'm sitting my and I'm laughing out loud. I have tears in my eyes. He goes. Another guy goes. Wow, this is even funnier than the last, which is his business partner. Yeah. And I'm like, I delivered. You know what That's I mean? It, yeah. You know, I sent it to my mother-in-law who's, you know, like 55 or whatever in Colorado. And, you right. know, and she's reading and she calls me up and she's crying. I can barely understand her because she can barely breathe from laughing so loud. And she goes, you're crazy. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> and I see, you know, the, the Jersey Journal, we absolutely love Herman. You know, it's what, you know, and, it's, right. yeah, and so when you hear those things, I'm like, wow. And I doubt it when I when it's out there. I'm like I, I get scared. I bite my teeth. I'm like, oh, this is my baby. Oh, what's the people gonna think? Right, yeah, and then well. when you hear these things, I mean, look at this family right there. That's that, that's a whole family that bought fifty books for a party I, for I all the kids. I saw that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, and for them to continue to come back and they're like, oh, it's so funny. And it's that makes that makes it all worth it for me. Which means is I can't uh, I can't force duty. Duty has to come to me. 
Right. You know what I mean? And I got to let it happen. I can't force the magic because I don't know what the magic is. I tell, like I was exactly saying, yeah. yeah, you don't know what it is. I, I honestly feel that there's spirits that talk to you, creative spirits from the past that are, that are reaching out and they're sending you creative energy and boom, and you're just running with it. Mm -hmm. Because how did this name in my toilet come to me driving through the Lincoln Tunnel like, oh, I got it. You know what I mean? How does that happen? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, it's like, the, the interaction, you know, it's, it's with anything. It's like, I don't know what works for you, the listener, but, you know, for me, you know, I can't write anything. I can't draw anything. I can't do anything unless I'm inspired. Thank you. There you go. That's it. Yeah. I just can't force it. I agree 100%. And if it means three months before and, 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 I, and I guaranteed my market that I'll have a trade paper back in July, <laughs> but I haven't drawn a page in a month and a half. Yep. You know, it's that. just, it's I'm just, sorry, it comes to me. Yeah. There was one day where it came to me and I, and I illustrated 15 pages in one day. That happens. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm on my deck. It's, you know, from eight in the morning to midnight and I'm just drawing and having fun. And I'm like, wow, this is great. And I'm laughing and I'm like, damn, dude, but you're crazy. You and it's those kind of things. Well, not everything that you write. I, I had found this out from researching different writers has to be published. Like just to stay in the flow. Right. Or just to say in sync with what you're doing is fantastic. There are many works that I write mm -hmm. that you will never, that will never see the light of day. I don't want to see it. It's better. And you know what? Even then, you never know that. You right. Never Even, know then, that. Right. Even then, you never know right. that. You never know what you may use it for. Yeah. Right. So, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, so I mean just to keep no, doing but, but no, I mean, just because you're not working on a specific project doesn't mean you're not creative. Yeah. Right. You know, and which is why it's great that we have Catch the Craze. It's great that I have so many different facets. You know, because if I can't draw today, um, hosting a show. If I can't, if I'm not hosting a show, I'm designing the website. If I'm not doing yeah. that, I'm marketing. If I'm not doing that, I'm you know, I'm public relations. I'm I'm doing the finances. I'm doing. I'm always doing something creative or something that's going to move the company forward. Mm -hmm. But you know, I can never do develop unless that energy is there. You know, and it's right. just with anything, you know, yeah. it's like I carry a sketchbook wherever I go. You know, I carry a notepad wherever I go because, you know, right now, like we, when I were talking, I'm working on a concept, you know, for that I want to develop as a film um, that came to me off the whim, you know. And so I want and I was sitting there, I was like, wow, and, I, and I'm sitting there right. and that's me being biased. I'm like, wow, that's. That's, play that's brilliant. I'm like, wow, where'd that come from? And then I'm thinking, I'm like, how, how did I think of that? And like, where'd that come? And I'm looking at, like, what spirits around me now? You know, it's like, who's there? You know, it's like Jim Henson. Are you around? You know, so you don't, you, you know, you don't know where it comes from. It just comes out of nowhere, left field. You know, I can recall when I was eight, 18 years old. I gotta find that black book. I have a black book, a sketchbook, um, and I forget the name of the, the characters. I was sitting in a room, in my bedroom, and all of a sudden I close my eyes, and now here's this imaginary world. And I see these characters interacting. With my eyes closed, I grab my book, and I'm sketching. And I'm seeing all these characters. I'm sketching these characters. And I hear their names. I hear them talking to each other. I'm like, what? And I'm putting their names on the paper, and I'm sketching. I'm like, because oh, I don't want to forget. And I'm like, boom, boom. And I was done. When I was done, I had 18 characters on, on different pages. And all these beautiful-looking creatures from different worlds. And I'm like, wow. I said, i got to make this story happen. I, I, and where did it come from? And I honestly think that there's like this creative energy that shoots through the universe, oh, yeah. and it's like, and you get hit, you get chosen for that moment, and like, what you do with it is up to you. Yeah, it's like someone saying, "I'm passing you the Grail. What are you gonna do with it?" Yeah, you know. I hear you. Yeah, I agree. Totally. They're like, "Damn, what's he smoking?" <laughs> <laughs> I agree totally. I I have to be inspired, or else it's just not gonna happen. Right. Yeah. You know. No. Yeah. I don't know. You can't force it. You can. That's not something that can be forced. It's not something that be can be coerced. You know. Yeah, I to really yeah. come from a place within. Yeah, and I feel for those guys that are on on, on schedules, like you know, yeah. that have to. We need another episode. We need another episode. We need another episode. Yeah. Write it down. Write. It. And you're forcing that creative juice. You know, and and those guys have, are extremely talented. But you know, what's different in that environment is like it's not like you're, you're the only writer on a series you know you're working with a collaborative unit and everybody's feeding off each other no how about adding this twist to that no, how about adding this twist so you know you're working in a room with a bunch that's of creators that's different when you're in a think right. tank atmosphere right, right. But when you're I like yeah but when you're an individual like for instance like I don't know comic company you, 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 your job is to have 24 scripts a year and so you have to write you know for this specific like X-Force you know X-Men or whatever mm -hmm. you know they want they want two scripts a month 
you know, and for this series. Contract. And you're and in the contract. And you have to produce. Now things. imagine if you're a Bendis and you're writing multiple titles. I don't know. But when you're that good, that's a whole different level. I think when you're that good, it's almost like taking a breath. It's like... Sort no. of. But no, it becomes a curse. Sort of, it, it sort of does become a curse. He's right mm-hmm. because there are going to be days when you are not that good. Right. Well, that's true. Or not yeah. good at all. Right. Or, what the hell do you do when you have a deadline breathing down your neck? Or you, you have found, 25 out, 24, 25, 24 hours to like hit that deadline, and you're like, oh my god, yeah. I meant I have a block. Or there you'll comes a time, some, there some there'll, be, there'll come a time, time where time. you have dialogue in X Men Unlimited, and this mm-hmm. this guy just said the same thing in in Peter Parker or whatever. You know, you wrote that, you don't realize that you just wrote the same damn thing. Yeah, and it's like, that oh. can happen. You know what I mean? You know, it's. And then you become a slave to your job, and it's no, it's no longer fun. Now it's work. Now it's work, yeah, and true. then it becomes that's a job. Right. It becomes, yeah. It's right. not, no longer something you love. Right. Yeah. So you better yeah. make sure that Actual you have work. make you better make sure you have stock options, and you make you better make sure that you have this this continu- this, this 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 little stipulation in your contract that says if I sell more than this many units, I get a bonus of this. You better have those things that's going to make that beneficial to you, right. because you can write all these books you want, but if you know this that capital gain is not there for you. As the creator, mm-hmm. so that way, when you retire, you can enjoy that money because you're gonna be a slave for a long time, yeah. for a long yeah. t- until the fans get tired of you. Yeah, because they'll that, dictate. They'll dictate factor. your lifespan. They'll yeah. say, "Well, you know what? Marvel is trying to cut it down. Put them on one book. Yeah. We want diversity now. Everything sounds the same." You know what I'm saying? So there's gonna be a time when there's gonna be a change, and you know, right? you know it, it just happens to be part of that revolution that came from. There was the the Oming, the Bendis, and David Mac. You know, they all came. You know, they were together. They were the three boys and whatever. And now, and what happened? David Mac eventually moved over to Marvel. So, it's you know, it's it, that's how life plays. You know, everything's trends, patterns. You know, ebbs and flows. Yep. Definitely. This is deep. <laughs> and uh, with that. And with that, I'm the host with the most. Sam the crazy man, Vera. Jonathan the Psycho Sci-Fi. Michelle St. Martin. The Maniac. And, uh, <laughs> is it, I could be the PMS Avenger, too. It, you're talking to me. <laughs> but that's already taken. Sorry, Mystery the, Men. Anyway. Mystery <laughs> Men. <laughs> and then, oh, and let me put this out there. If there's anything, we, I always say this. Y'all got to do it. If there's anything we say that you disagree with, don't fuss about it. Let us know. I'm going to have on my website my email up. Oh, no. Oh. Send oh. emails about what y'all think. What y'all pick. I don't care if it's good, bad. I don't care if it's, I hate y'all views. Oh, you really hit on the head. I'm glad you approached that topic. Let us know what you feel. It's better to let us know so that we could actually address it or try to take it in consideration than you kind of fussing them on yourself and keeping that tension within the the independent world. Let us know. We always want to hear feedback. The only bad feedback is no feedback. Anything mm. else we want to hear? Anything else? Well, let me let me tell you this. I right? send all your negative feedback fe- feedback to Jonathan the Cycle Sacrifice. <laughs> I only want to hear the good stuff. Not me. All right. Not you, me. All right. Send it to him. Not uh, me. Send it to me. I'll I'll go. No, but um, it was something I did want to say, and I just lost that train of thought. What the hell was it? Um, oh, you know, I know I specifically mentioned some religious things on the show and whatever. You might not agree. I'm not saying it's factual. I'm just saying, you know, we all grew up in a society where we were told certain things. There's not, I'm not saying there's one truth or whatever. It's just to make a generalized statement. It's just using it as a, 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 a source to pull from. So I'm not there targeting your religion or anybody else's religion, you know, it's just to have a conversation. So if I made offense to you guys, I apologize. Um, but there was no, you know, there was no, we weren't choosing a specific market or, or a specific religious group. So it was just conversation. Um, besides that, uh, and they're like, where? I don't remember that. Let's go back and rewind. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, I am your host. Thank you for listening. You know, thank you for welcoming um, Michelle, Melissa, Maniac, yeah. Martin. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Damn. Damn. Yeah, she's the you know first how many time. Melissa comments I'm going to get on MySpace now? Oh, Thank Melissa. Thank you very much. Melissa. Oh, I got it down. Michelle. Oh, <laughs> the guys of Cag, well, the guys in Cag are roll up on us. They go, what are you Michelle. talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And, uh, you know, James Brown, James is going to be pissed off. But, uh, <laughs> thank you for listening. We had nothing but love for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know? Whoa. All right? You think you know. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to break out on that note. Bye. Catch the craze forever, baby. Later. Uh. Yeah. Check the flow, cause you know I got so The neighbors cast the craze, baby So act like you know what's called Cast the craze The one originator, the crazy creator Giving you a fever with my poor dream of Medina Weekly all the time with the newest and the best Independence from the north, the south, east, the west You got the SSS and the devils that are silent Kiss me comics cause it ain't all about violence Neat stuff collects in the brothers, the tables Crazy comics in the house are willing and able The underground sounds from hip hop to rock Jamming on the saxophone is my boy Philip Clark Cause I'm um, my keeps it going cause you know I got to flow The name is Uncle Sam, like like you know, act like you know Bug it now, baby. Spread the word, have you heard? 